So, you're looking for a fast way to hit level 50. Or wait, maybe you're looking for an easy way to level assault. Or engineering. Or maybe cold blood is what you're after. What if I told you there was a massive glitch in Cyberpunk 1.3 to abuse that would let you level any of those extremely quickly? What if you could level any combat skill fast at lightning? What if I told you this glitch was the fastest way in the game to level these skills? What? Not good enough for you. Okay. What if I also told you I found a way to level three skills to max level at the same time? Is there really such a glitch in Cyberpunk 1.3? Well, get ready, because I'm about to tell you that there is just such a glitch to abuse. Not only is it the fastest way to level, but it's also a safe way to level. How convenient. Doing this exploit takes a lot. And depending on what you're trying to level, it could take even more. It all begins with a very important glitch that I've mentioned before on this YouTube, the invincibility exploit. That's right. That exploit is the basis of all that you're about to see and abuse today. But before we get the invincibility glitch going, first we're gonna need money, and a lot of it. What's worse is we're gonna need a lot of money before leveling up to max, not after. How could we possibly get a lot of money so early into the game? Fear not, if you're subscribed to this channel, you already know that answer, the Sasquatch glitch. And fortunately for us, the only remaining money glitch that I know of in 1.3 just so happens to be on the way to unlocking the invincibility exploit. Oh my, how convenient. To get infinite money, you will need to progress through the main story missions until you reach a quest called I Walk the Line. And this mission proceed will have you fight your way through the Pacifica Mall to kill a Netrunner. Along the way, you'll fight a boss that people nickname Sasquatch. Be sure to bring a melee weapon for this, or take Sasquatch's hammer during the fight. Save your game before fighting her in case you mess this up. You only get one chance. Now, blow up Sasquatch's battery pack and then win the fight. Afterwards, do not finish Sasquatch off. Instead, save your game on a new file just in case. Now, finish Sasquatch off. Now, save your game on another new file, just in case something goes wrong on this step too. Now load the save file you just made after finishing her off. When you load back in, immediately look down at Sasquatch and beat her to death with a melee weapon. The quicker you do this, the less hits it will take. Doing this should give you 15,000 euro dollars. Save your game and then load the save. After you load in, finish her again. Repeat this process until you have as much money as you want. I highly recommend doing this for 30 minutes to an hour at a minimum since you won't get a second chance at this one. Now that we have that money issue out of the way, we move on to the next step of the process. And my god, is it a process to set all this up. Next up is the permanent invincibility glitch. To do the invincibility exploit, you're going to need to have the Send in the Clown side mission available to you. This quest becomes available after completing the main story mission where you play through a flashback as Johnny. That mission chain is also the one that has you kill Matilda Rose, aka Sasquatch, as well as potentially Placid so and his boss. After that main story mission chain ends, you need to wait around for 5-10 to 10 minutes in Japantown. Doing this should trigger a text message from Ozob the Clown. Open up your text messages and give him a call back. This will start the Send in the Clowns mission. Track this mission in the menu, pick up Ozob, drive him to the drop off location, and do not drop him off. Instead, Drive over into this alleyway, aggro these enemies, and drive back. Wait by the drop off point until the enemies move up a little. That way they won't lose aggro during the cutscene. If you think you have it set up, then drive up onto the drop off location. This will initiate a cutscene with Ozob, leaving the car and entering a building. During this cutscene, you are completely invincible. And if you're in combat during this cutscene, it'll let you leave the car as soon as Ozob enters the building. At this point, exit the car immediately and run as far away as you can. Once you go far enough, Ozob will text you, and that's how you know you failed the mission. And because the cutscene never finished, that invincibility it gave you never got turned off. Congratulations! Now you're invincible for the rest of your playthrough. There are a few other cutscenes in the game that trigger invincibility, and if you happen to run into one of those, it'll take your invincibility away. So be mindful of that. With that step out of the way, we're now one step closer to breaking Cyberpunk 1.3's leveling system. And oh my, is it broken. We're getting close, but now you're gonna need a fast car. The best car to get is the Caliburn. If you're lucky, you can run back and forth on this part of this road for a few minutes and get a text about a buying a Caliburn for 165,000 euro dollars. 
can't get that text message to pop up, then you're gonna have to settle for whatever fast car you can purchase. The Quadro is a reasonable alternative. Just be careful not to get in it immediately after buying it. Uh, let's just call it later. Ah, yes, there we go. <coughs> the next step in this insane exploit is to get your hands, or more specifically, your arms, on a projectile launch system. You can find one of these at multiple Ripper docks, but I personally prefer Victor by the Bradbury and Baran Fast Travel because he sells the lowest level version. Once you pay back your debt of 21,000 euro dollars, you can trade with Victor like a normal Ripper dock. Afterwards, go ahead and buy up a projectile launch system. Next, we need to go to the Ripper dock in Southwest Haywood by the Pumping Station Fast Travel. Trade with him, then click the trade button at the top. Over on the right, buy a tranquilizer round cyberware attachment. Now, go to your menu, then cyberware, click your arms, then attach the tranquilizer rounds mod onto the projectile launch system. It's worth noting, however, that you'll need 20 street cred to buy Victor's projectile launch system. If you don't have it, I'd recommend playing the game normally until you get it. Or if you're really in a hurry, you can do these crime missions as quickly as possible by running in, grabbing the objective, and running away from each one. And congratulations again. You now have the strongest weapon in the entire game. And while nerfed from its original overpowered state, it's still the fastest way to get your character level up to 50. And what about those other skills I talked about? How do we level those up? Well, let's take this thing one step at a time because in order to cheese those skills with this exploit, we have to get our character level to 50. So let's focus on that first. So what exactly is this leveling exploit for 1.3 that we spent all this time working towards? And how could it possibly be better than killing random enemies on the streets of Night City for 20 plus hours? Well, it's time to find out. So now, without further ado, the leveling exploit you've been waiting for. The time has finally come. Your destiny awaits you. The key to your future lies in the hands of none other than the NCPD Border Patrol? That's right. Not only are these the strongest enemies in the entire game, they're also the most dense and the most easily respawnable. That is, at least until they come out with the free DL. Uh, um, so, as I was saying, head on down to the border checkpoint fast travel. Unlock it if you don't already have it. Now, let's walk over to the Border Patrol. As you might already know, they'll be absolutely thrilled to see you. In fact, they'll be so excited about your arrival that they'll start shooting their guns at you. But joke's on them this time because we've got a major exploit up our sleeve. Thanks to the invincibility glitch, casually walk up to the enemies and start mowing them down one by one with the projectile launch system. Thanks to the cooldown, you'll have to be a little more careful and meticulous than in the past. So be especially careful with the guys who dodge bullets. You can shoot them a few times to see if they're in dodge mode or not. But I'd highly recommend shooting them from a distance because believe it or not, the projectile launch system with tranquilizer rounds actually counts as a silenced weapon. Yes, that's right. Even though it makes a big explosion to the enemy's ears and eyes, nothing happens. Don't forget to have a pistol or rifle equipped so you can finish them off for double XP. That's right, we get the experience for killing them with the projectile launch system, and we get the same experience again for finishing them off while they sleep. Even though they're level 50, they die to a couple shots from any weapon. Once you've finished off all the enemies, or as many as you want to kill per cycle, run out of range of the turrets, jump in the air, and summon your car. And yes, jumping in the air while summoning the car will make this faster by making it more likely to spawn right next to you. Now, take your car and drive to this point on the road. You go this far, all the enemies at the border will respawn. Now turn around and drive back. Get out of your car and murder them again, Terminator style. Repeat this process until you hit level 50. With this leveling exploit, you should be able to go from level, say, 10, all the way to level 50 in two or three hours. Two if you're really good at the projectile launch system and as many as six hours if you're really bad with the projectile launch system. Don't worry though. Regardless of your skill level, hitting level 50 with this exploit is only step one in breaking Cyberpunk 1.3. We're just getting started. Before we move on to breaking the skill leveling part of Cyberpunk, 
here are a few tips that'll help you hit level 50 much faster using this exploit. First off, don't even bother aggroing them. The projectile launch system with tranquilizer rounds doesn't make any sound. Yes, that's right, these explosions don't make any sound at all. At least to the enemy's ears. Just start on one side, keep some distance, and pick them off one at a time. It's much faster. And I personally prefer starting on the right side because it's easier to spawn your car on the left side. I don't know why, it just works that way. Next, stop by a weapon shop and buy a silencer and attach it to literally any assault rifle. Now what you can do is fire your three shots with the projectile launch system, then finish enemies off with the silenced assault rifle while you're waiting for the cooldown of the projectile launch system. Another important tip, see how enemies, some enemies have yellow arrows above their heads and others don't? Only shoot the guards that have the arrows because the other ones will not give you any XP. Last, when you drive away to respawn the border guards, go ahead and drive far enough away to lose the cops. This will prevent them from walking in front of you when trying to farm the border guards. And there you have it, the fastest way to hit max level in Cyberpunk 1.3. But wait, why did we farm all that money earlier? What was that all about? And what about leveling other skills? Like I mentioned earlier in the video. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. And the Calibur wasn't the only thing we needed money for. Yes, that's right. I have some more tricks up my sleeve. <laughs> Did you really think it ends at level 50? No, that was only the beginning. Would you like to get crafting to level 20? Or what about engineering? Have you leveled cold blood yet? Do you even know how to level cold blood? But wait, don't answer that question because I already know the answer is a resounding yes. Wait a minute. If we can level two skills to max level at the same time, surely there must be some way to level three skills to max level at the same time. No, of course not. There's no way that... Oh, wait a minute. How did you know? You must finally be catching on. Of course. Of course there's a way to level three skills to max level at the same time using this exploit. It wouldn't be cyberpunk if we couldn't. But first, we'll need two quick preparations. Step one... We need a rare frag grenade schematic. As for the second step, remember all that money you collected earlier? Well, as it turns out, you'll be needing that after all. Head on over to the weapon shop near the Ventura and Skyline Fast Travel in South Haywood. Now that they fixed the shop crafting specs bug in 1.3, fingers crossed, you should be able to go to this weapon shop and buy the rare FGX frag grenade crafting spec. If it's not here, try leaving and skipping 24 hours and checking again. Do this a few times, and if it's still not there, try this method at another weapon shop until you find it. Hopefully you'll find it here though. There used to be a world drop of this crafting spec, but for some reason in 1.3 they swapped it to a rare bio grenade instead because, well, cyberpunk. Now that you have the frag grenade crafting spec, you're going to need to head on over to your nearest junk shop. I personally prefer this guy. He's in the middle of nowhere near the Las Palapas Motel Fast Travel. What makes this guy so special? Well, you can skip 24 hours right in front of him, when other shops make you run away before you can skip time. This allows us to buy the components we need as quickly as possible. Now, regardless of the junk shop, buy all their rare item components and all their uncommon item components, aka the blue and green item components. Now, skip 24 hours and buy them again. And again. And again. And again. Keep doing this until you have thousands of components, or if you want to be diligent and patient, buy components until you have 32,000 rare item components and 24,000 uncommon components. But what's that? Why 32,000 components, you say? Well, because we need 8,000 rare FGX frag grenades, of course. Crafting this many will take you all the way to crafting level 20. I told you we'd be leveling three skills till 20 at the same time, didn't I? Be careful not to craft them all at once, however, as grenades have weight, and if you craft too many at a time, you'll find yourself unable to move. So craft them in batches on an as-need basis. Now that you have enough materials for 8,000 frag grenades and level 20 crafting, the time has finally come. Yes, finally, we're ready to exploit Cyberpunk yet again in an explosion of experience and glory. Before we begin, open up your menu, Go to the character screen, go to your cool attribute, and then press the cold blood skill. We're going to need at least one level of the cold blood perk. When 
Or if you have high enough cold blood skill, return here and buy two stacks of the critical condition perk. It'll help you a lot when leveling this skill. Now, finally, after all that prep work, you finally made it. The time has come for you to face your destiny. Your moment is now. Your time is now. Your future and everything you ever dreamed of lies at the border patrol guards? Yes, that's right. We're going to use these guards to break the game yet again. Head on over to the border checkpoint fast travel and just like last time, run over to the guards. But this time, things are going to be a little different. I take that back. Things are going to be wildly different. Equip your grenades, then run straight at the guards. Next now, start throwing your frag grenades wildly in their general direction as you run around the border. Grenade. Don't worry, they're homing grenades. They'll do the rest. Don't bother killing them all. Once you feel like you've killed most of the border patrol, run away, call your car, then drive at least this far on the road. If you don't lose the cop aggro by this point, then drive all the way to this point on the road. Now, turn around and head back. Repeat this process until you've leveled engineering as high as you want, because these enemies are level 50. You'll earn thousands of engineering XP with each cycle. It's really, really fast. And what about cold blood? Well, you see, cold blood XP is awarded based on kill streaks. And since you're killing the guards in quick succession, you'll be leveling up cold blood at the same time. Yes, it's quite amazing, honestly. Once you've run out of grenades, go to your inventory and craft some more. Keep crafting grenades, using grenades, respawning enemies, and repeating until you hit level 20 in each of these skills. But wait, what about other combat skills? Well, there's nothing stopping you. But if you really want to level them fast, the best way to do that is by subscribing to this channel. In the coming days, weeks, and months, I'll be posting more cyberpunk content, hopefully including build guides for each weapon type. That way, you can combine those builds with this exploit to level up each skill to level 20 in record speed. And there you have it. The best leveling exploit in Cyberpunk 1.3. Nothing else comes even close. Now, you too can skip straight to max level if you choose to do so.